like, oh my God, I'm all over the place. Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Can you believe we are in February already? Where did January go? Normally I think January takes a long time, but for me, this year it seemed to fly by. So I thought I'd bring a January happies to you. So January was super, super busy here and it's been productive and wonderful. I felt more connected through this first month of the year than I have for years really, more connected with friends that I've been making in the tarot community. So a lot of January has been circling around study and study groups and project groups. So I wanna talk about that first. And one of those study groups focused around one of my goals for this year, which was to find out more about the I Ching, to understand my deck, that use this system. So the decks that I've got are the Barbara Walker, the I Ching of the Goddess Oracle, which is amazing. I also have the Visionary I Ching cards by Paul O'Brien, which is so, so beautiful. Now in January, I also bought another deck to help me study. And this is this one, the I Ching Complete Divination Kit. It includes the coins and really good study cards. This is more of a study deck. I have been the worst at keeping up with the group. I did fine up until towards the end of January and then I got behind and then my inner critic kicked so in. I got a bit behind but the group is so understanding and so lovely and it did teach me something about myself. The way I reacted to falling behind but I'll talk about that in a bit. This is the um, Visionary I Ching cards. This is just so beautiful. Look, it's all this sort of landscape, abstracty art. Then you've got the Barbara Walker I Ching of the Goddess deck, which is this okay. one. You can see this is a lot simpler. It gives you the hexagram and it gives you the keyword and the number. And then look, if I show you the back a bit more clearly, so it gives you a kind of idea of what the hexagram means. But then these questions, two or three questions per hexagram, see there are three questions there that are just really good for pulling further tarot cards about and that's what we've been doing. So let me just show you a few cards from these decks so you can get a feel of the three different cards but you can see these have got quite different feels to them but combined it's just such a nice study tool uh, with all the hexagrams in there of course it's very elemental eating you've got mountain and air and thunder and ocean and breath and wind so it's all of those elements represented in completely different ways in these three decks. Each one wonderful. It's been really nice to be able to share some of these card pulls. Now you can see here some of the tarot spreads I did based on those I Ching questions. I've been using the Star Tarot and the Star Tarot has just been so beautiful alongside especially the visionary I Ching cards. I think the Star Tarot and these cards together have just looked completely wonderful. I bought one book initially as a after a recommendation from one of you lot and that is the Stephen Carter Total I Ching Myths for Change. It is very good. It is also very in-depth, sometimes a little bit too in-depth. You can see I've been writing all over it. Um, I wanted to get a slightly simpler one, and so I ordered this one as well, not realising it was by the same person. That just goes to show you shouldn't order fast on Amazon before you've checked it out. So I have been working with these two books. This book is kind of like a slightly more diluted version of this one, which has helped when I felt behind in my studies. Okay. It's been fantastic to work with the Star Tarot, sublimely beautiful. The guidebook as well is so fantastic. It is so good. So I just can't resist turning the camera 
top down and just showing you how wonderful these de two decks are together. I mean, it's just a feast, isn't it? And we all, we all love tarot feasts for the eyes, don't we? And this is absolutely what this has been. It's been an absolute tarot feast for the eyes, but also profound in its voice as well, which is the important bit as well. We're not just about looking at decks, it's the messages we get. And I have, um, I've had some pretty incredible messages from these cards and synchronicities this month because it's been quite incredible really but I just really wanted to show you this in, in this format because isn't it lovely I also tried to join in with a Marseille tarot study and I, I still intend to I started reading this book um, Oh my gosh, this book is fantastic. And was to learn two cards a week. I've read up on two cards in the whole of January. So I am six cards behind seven, if you count February. Well, nearly eight cards behind. So two out of eight, that's how, that's how far behind I've got. But the cards that I've read so far, the magician and the four and the descriptions in this book are wonderful. And here you can see some pictures of the decks and some of the spreads I've pulled around my study uh, and my Tarot de Marseille decks. I've been using the Spanish Tarot, the Tarot de Maria Celia, I think that's right, and my Mythical Creatures Tarot. You can see all three decks here, very different, but it's just been so much fun. A late night reading at my table with all my coloured pens out and my journal book out. So I've fallen behind, not for love of doing it, just because life and look, Blue Boy was keeping me company on that night and it was just so much fun. This book, this write-up of The Fall in here was so incredible and I'd never noticed that his bomb was hanging out before. Have <laughs> I never noticed that about The Fall in the Tarot de Marseille? These little cards here are the Maria Celia and look, you've got the mythical creatures there in the centre, which is just, just divine really. It's an amazing deck. But on top of all of that, I've also been doing Sylvain's 365 yellow bricks. Now, Sylvain over at Sylvain Deadly Sins. Last year, he, at the end of last year, he proposed that if anybody wanted to spend a year in Oz with him, to get the books and in all of this series of books which is all the complete writings of the Wizard of Oz and the Land of Oz books there are 365 chapters so that's a chapter a day so Sylvain very bravely and brilliantly suggested that he would put a daily video up with a tarot exercise or an exploration or journaling prompt based around the chapter of the day. So the first 24 days of January was this book, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. This is the first book, 24 chapters in this. They're only short little chapters. Can you believe the whole of the film of The Wizard of Oz is contained within this first book? So all the other books to come, I don't know any of the stories of. So I'm really excited to explore Oz and to carry on with this study. So I loved it so much I started to build a handmade journal to take some of my key takeaways from this journal book. So my daily journaling is going in this little notebook which is the colour of Dorothy's dress, that's why I picked it. So I am doing all of my scribbles and my journaling and just my quick notes for every day is going in here. But from this and from the books, I thought it would be nice to collate pictures of the tarot readings, some key takeaways and do something a bit more arty. So I've been building, which you can see I haven't finished yet, there's still bits waiting for glue to dry. I've been doing, um, decorating this journal. This checkerboard is to represent the checker in Dorothy's dress. But you can see this is a handmade 
journal just built from scrap this is from an amazon envelope and just scrap paper here i've got all of the signatures ready to go it still needs its fastening put on the front and it still needs some of these bits i haven't got to yet to be decorated but you have to build these a little bit of, at a time to let them dry that was built and decorated throughout january and in order to decorate some of the signature pages more before i start writing i started looking at sort of scrapbook pictures of the wizard of oz but on etsy that it was all too expensive and they were downloadable so my printer isn't very good so i thought i wonder if i can find a book to do with the wizard of oz that's got original pictures in so i went online and i found this version of the first book but with its original illustrations uh, it's like a reprint oh my gosh and i thought i could just take this to a photocopier and photocopy some of these original illustrations to glue onto some of my signatures in my in my bigger in my bigger journal just think these line drawings are just so wonderful so looking through this book and having bought this book in january it just got me really fascinated with the art around the wizard of oz and that that story and of course my word of the year is story so it seems apt that it should have me fascinated so i then found this book the oz scrapbook which is by david l green and dick martin this is quite expensive to buy in some places but i found it for three pounds on world of books so i jumped at this book and uh, this is just full of so much imagery to do with all of those stories around the wizard of oz some of it is quite creepy some of these original pictures which one of you sent me as well as an instagram message saying have you seen this um and they are super creepy but oh my gosh i, I love this book so this has been um a fascinating a fascinating buy in january which i am going to use though these two books to really make my journal really pop to carry on this year and of course the tarot deck that i've been using for the 365 yellow bricks is a new one which i bought in january specifically for this project which is the wandering star tarot by cat pierce so i'll put some of the pictures in here of some of my work and i i did some some of these little video clips as well as i was working through the month to share here uh, and you can see it was just fantastic it was wonderful i've got my barbie dorothy keeping me company as well which i unboxed as part of this project in january i think i might need to do a follow-up video all in its own right about the 365 yellow bricks and i think in that i'll talk about the magic of these cards from the dark mirror oracle which i've been working with it real real magic in some of my tarot card pulls in january so other decks i have absolutely loved working with somnia tarot which i've shared a few times in january and also this into the lonely woods oracle by lucy cavendish these two i paired together as a way to begin to explore my word of the year so stories that stories that possibly belong to the past and store new stories what new stories to come I did mention that falling behind with some of these studies gave me an insight into a story that runs in my head and it is a story that once I get behind other people are mad at me so it's almost like a projected story I project a story narrative into other people and that's just not fair because 
this last January, the growth with my word of the year has been that other people don't have the voice that was given to me in childhood by people who are mean. So when I fell behind on these studies, I've come back into the group really apologetic and really panicked, thinking they're all thinking, oh, go away, you're rubbish, you're wasting our time. And all I was met with was love and understanding and you've got a lot on, you're amazing, don't worry, just jump in, go at your own pace. To be met with that sort of response has shown a really stark difference between the story running in my head and the reality, the new story. The new story is that people don't mind if you fall behind, you've got a lot on, you're not ridiculous, you're not um, pathetic, you're not incapable. Where did I get that story from? Those are words that I heard in childhood when I wasn't providing enough support for other people. So it made me realise this study in January that I take those words told to me in childhood and I put them into other people's mouths now as a stick to beat myself with. So already my word story is really helping me to take the sticks away that I'm trying to hand out to other people to beat myself with. There is no shame in falling behind when you're a single mom with three kids, when school transport gets cancelled out of the blue and you end up with four hours on the school run, or when you suddenly hear from the car garage that your new car, which has been ordered for two and a half years and has been on a two and a half year delay, is suddenly ready out of the blue, which happened in January. It was Tilly's new motability car, which I lease. It got on a two and a half year delay. And all of a sudden in January, when I'm in the midst of all this study, I get a phone call saying, it's gonna be ready in five days time. So what's the problem with that, you might say? How, why would that stop you studying? Well, I had a driveway, if you remember, that was absolutely rammed with fallen down hedges that I was trying to clear. I was doing tip runs backwards and forwards to the tip with tree trunks, not the type of thing you wanna put in a brand new car. So all of a sudden I had a week to clear the entire driveway, which of course took up about 15 hours of solid work a day for a week. I don't think I've ever worked so hard in January as doing that. It, I think, I was gonna say it almost broke me, but it did break me. See the dog doesn't like me being out here. Right, I'm gonna to attempt to cut this back today and completely clear this. Oh my gosh, there was a lot. It was a lot and it did put me behind Tilly's transport, it did get canceled. That was a lot of work. But the other side of it, look at this moment in January. I went in exhausted after a week of solid work, clearing that driveway, making sure that new cars wouldn't get scratched and I wouldn't have to put any broken tree trunks into this beauty. My brand new Motability car, this is leased with Tilly's Motability money and uh, I always feel like a queen. All my life I've had second-hand broken down cars. So to get reliable cars through the Motability Scheme is just a lifesaver. Um, so it put me behind and the lesson of January was that was okay. It doesn't mean I am a terrible person and everybody hates me. It's floored me how beautifully kind the people I have around me now are so kind that it's shining a spotlight on those ridiculous narratives that have been stuck in my head for way too long. January also gave me two other opportunities to learn exactly the same lesson because in January I had two birthday presents come. Well, I had three birthday presents come actually because rumour gifted me for my birthday 
the Somnia Tarot, which rumour, I just love it. You know how much I love it. But then I had two other birthday presents arrive from people that I'd also done the same thing with as my study pal. Now, Shauna, last year we were doing the Hallow Quest together and Shauna was fantastic at it. If you go to Shauna's channel, and I'll link it below, she's got lots of videos updating about the Hallow Quest and she kept um, the momentum going whereas I got distracted. I had a lot of stress about thinking I'd let Shauna down and what must Shauna be thinking of me and I bet Shauna was fed up that she'd agreed to do it with me and I bet Shauna must hate me now. Nothing at all that Shauna had done. Shauna's been supportive and loving and encouraging even in the face of all that evidence over all of last year and throughout January that that Shauna is not cross at me and doesn't hate me. That voice was still taking over. And then all of a sudden, out the blue, through the post, I got sent this beautiful handmade journal from Shauna with lots of beautiful stickers in, in here. Look, here are all the stickers. So there are butterflies and there are flowers. Look at those flower stickers and this beautiful urn, look at that. And then this one on the front, which I put on the front of this journal. As a, as a thank you for being like a partner in crime and a good friend, and it blew me away. It, and I just thought, what have you been doing? You've been dissolving in the face of imaginary stories in your head but worse than just an imaginary story it's the projection you've been projecting them into the mouths of good kind loyal wonderful interesting friends it was the same lesson and then another lesson my dear friend amber who's got the channel here lavender moon who i i love amber I had been doing um, her, her course. She's got the most amazing course out at the moment. I'll link that all below. And I'd really focused on the course, but then again, got distracted. Honestly, I'm so bad at finishing anything. And I got so distracted. The minute I get distracted and fall behind with anything, the lesson that I've learned is that I just down tools. I down tools and panic and then think everybody hates me and then hide from people because I think everybody hates me. So I felt really bad about having let Amber down and I thought she must hate me. She must really resent the work she's put into me. I bet she thinks I'm useless. Exactly the same narrative. If I can't be perfect for somebody, then I'm in big trouble. I wonder where I learned that from. Look at the old story that's running there. And I kept sending messages to Amber every so often saying, I'm so sorry, I, I really let you down. She was beautiful and kind and loving and there is no need to apologise. So even in the face of the evidence of how beautiful Amber was, this old narrative of if you can't be perfect, you are hated was still running and then i got another birthday present sent from amber people who hate you don't send you birthday presents especially not a huge box like this all the way from america which is ram packed full of decks With just a simple message, thank you for being an amazing person. I love you. Enjoy the decks. What? What? So, guys, I know I've rambled so much in this January Happies video so far, and I'm so sorry. But I, it, it's just been a really profound month for learning lessons based around my word of the year it, it, it's just really um it's really moved the needle for me with seeing a hidden story this isn't something that i was aware of the fact that i down tools if i'm not completely perfect and then i hide from people and then i project a story 
into their mouths a voice from the past saying we hate you now because you didn't give your all to us but of course people aren't thinking like that anymore you've got new people around you so here's a little peek inside the box guys would you like me to share the contents of this birthday present because I'd love to show you, but let me know if that's something you would be interested in seeing, like seeing what's in this birthday box. Uh, let me know in the comments I think section. It shows the the power of having a word of the year, and to to stop when you're becoming dysregulated. For me, dysregulation feels like shame hiding and then that voice thinking everybody hates me that's what dysregulation looks like for me currently but my word of the year has kind of pulled me up when i got dysregulated and has allowed me to say okay what's going on what's the story here just like last year when i got overwhelmed my story was okay why aren't you going slower where's the slow living freedom and it's been brilliant it's brought about some real growth in a month so i really wanted to share that okay another big part of january um has been for me the art studio i then spent quite a bit of time in amongst to the front driveway um in the art studio because the sheila nagigs from my adventure tarot quest began to call me so I started having images in my mind look I've got loads of artwork here to show you about my visits out to the two churches we've done so far for the Sheila and the gigs I just kept getting whispers about those visits and what those Sheilas were telling me so I got this huge, this is only like a cheap sort of kids sketchbook really. And you can see I have started, can you see, I've started piecing together some pages around the messages of those Sheilas. Not only did I want to draw the Sheila, now this one actually slides out of here. Let me slide her out. So there's one Sheila. As I was drawing them not only did I draw them but I began to write down the words that were coming to me as I was drawing them so the words in here talk about a lifeboat entering a lifeboat not sinking anymore and, and I suppose this ties into the lesson that I learnt around that story that runs in my head that people hate me in the past I was given lessons in drowning I wasn't given swimming lessons. People didn't want me to swim. People around me wanted me to drown. The Sheila feels like a new mother now, teaching me to climb into the lifeboat, teaching me to swim. So I put, enter the lifeboat, sweet girl. It's there, the safety, always there, soft and warm when waves crash. The consuming water, stealing your breath, stealing it away, salt waves. Salt tears cried like an ocean. Puddle becoming lake, becoming vast seas. Horizon lines disappearing into sky. When you can't breathe at the vastness of it all, know that the lifeboat of my love and safety is there waiting. The breathing space to meet seed once more. The beginning of who you were before the ocean stole your breath and whispered drown. In the sickly sweet voice familiar, the strange tone of half-remembered ghosts, shadow memory. But no ghosts are allowed in the boat, just you and you and me and a gentle rocking till you know you can swim again. So these messages that I've been getting from the Sheilas as I've been drawing have kind of tied in in January with that idea of voices from the past that are still going around your head they might be drowning lessons they're not necessarily going to be swimming lessons and moving forward in the future i want to learn to swim so i carried on with these images now this this wasn't done in january this was one done before january 
I'm showing you this one because it's very site specific. This is actually the Sheila from Kilpeck. The message that I got when I went to Kilpeck, it's not only the Sheila and the tarot cards that I pulled there, but also the landscape. This is Kilpeck Castle, which is behind the, the church where the Sheila Nagig is. And Kilpeck was full of memories of old because it's where I lived as a kid. And her message within that landscape was to take up space, to march around the castle, to own the castle on the hill, to know that you've got the boundary walls in place now. So what I did, I went back to these drawings that I'd done based last year on those visits and the different messages and I just expanded it. I expanded it with the words and I um, I started drawing new Sheila in the gigs. These are the ones that I started doing in January from this one. So this was um, the one, was this in Oxford? Where was this one? Shrewsbury? I forget where this one was. But this was about friendship and the message from that Sheila in a gig and about the different paths that we can choose. So these are wax pastels. But I then started adding in sort of mixed media to draw the Sheila in a gig on based on the messages that were coming through. And I had the best time ever drawing these you can see like some of the layered the layered um, mixed media layers with the wax drawing coming through you can see this one says climbing climbing now I've told you about the messages about the boat you would understand why it's got climbing climbing printed down the side and the idea of the waves crashing in the rainbow imagery comes from that Kilpeck as all of this narrative was coming in walking the hills at Kilpeck Castle a rainbow appeared over the church it was just so incredible it omens everywhere and I think the omens of those visits are seeding into the story I'm getting as well you can see this is about ghosts of the past it says ghosts from the deep in the shallows about those ghosts from the past or the stories from the past coming into the present day uh, you can see there's lots of mixed media in this one there are some old nails in here as well and I've loved it you can see I've really enjoyed making these sheilas a whole series of them which I am still continuing to do so that's been the artwork in January guys it's been so much fun you, I've put some close-up pictures in here if you're interested so I, I have been busy in the art studio even though I've not done any painting or any more toy tarot I am not going to berate myself for that because we're moving in new stories swimming lessons now guys okay the other thing in January which I loved was this book the daily magic book by Jadika Illes now this is takes you day by day through the year every day so it's like a, a diary but it's a, like a diary that gives you saints days or anything anything magic linked or ritual linked or um a myth anything that is magical for each day of the year it lists even down to severus snape's birthday was listed in here so what i did i read the whole of january at the start of january and i bought what i'm calling a magic calendar it is only like a really cheap like 50 pence calendar but this is my magic calendar and what i've done i read january and anything that i was really fascinated about i put on my magic calendar now i haven't done february yet i'm going to do the same for february i thought this would be a really nice idea for doing quests or planning rituals or planning adventures out I did put on here to research Daruma dolls, which I did. They were really fascinating. Of course, the word doll in anything is 
is fascinating. So the Tuesday, the 3rd of January, Mary was all about Daruma dolls. Deborah Snape's birthday was the 9th of January. Of course, Bridget's, Bridget's Eve was on here as well. Lots and lots of things. Didn't necessarily implement any of the adventures, but as you can see, my January was super busy. And that's it, guys. I'm going to stop talking there. I think that was pretty waffly so if it was i do apologize you enjoyed seeing some of the books and some of the tarot decks i used as well and i also hope your january was amazing and productive or gentle and calming i hope january soothed your soul so february guys let's see what february brings not so much hedge clearing please because that did break me physically for a while so guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye